Hello, and welcome to Naval Horizons. I'm Samina Mondal, a public affairs intern with the US Naval Research Laboratory, part of the Naval Research Enterprise. Today, it's my absolute pleasure to be joined by Mr. Israel Jordan, the Director of Technical Initiatives and Strategy Office for Naval Air Warfare Center's Aircraft Division, Webster Outlying Field. Thank you for joining us, Israel. Thank you, awesome, good to be here. So, just to jump right in, you yes, have had an extensive career in both the technical and strategic efforts of STEM. So how exactly did you get your start in the Department of the Navy? Also, it's, uh, it's been rewarding and I would say it's been a, a long trek. So I would say basically coming out of uh, college, um, I majored in electrical engineering. Um, I also did a stint with uh, the United States Marine Corps as a part of uh, the Office of Canada School. So where I actually earned my um, second lieutenant bars, but I decided to kind of use uh, my STEM mind to kind of help design and develop technologies uh, for the Navy, kind of going a different route. Um, once I did get my actual bachelor's degree in electrical engineering, um, I actually went down to what we call the um, BAYA, which is the Black Engineer Year Awards Conference that was held in Baltimore, Maryland every year. Um, now it's called uh, becoming everything you are um, within the STEM field. And basically there um, I met uh, NAV Air, Naval Air Systems Command, um, which is uh, considered NOC AD, Naval Air Warfare Center Aircraft Division. I met a couple of recruiters. Um, they kind of stepped out, they said, hey, you know, come, let's come talk to me. Uh, went down, talked to them. Um, they looked at the resume, they said, okay, this is what we do. They called me, they showed me some cool technologies. Uh, things that they integrate and things that they build and design uh, on aircraft, on ship platforms, on unmanned aerial systems, unmanned aerial vehicles. It was just some cool stuff um, that they showed me. And that led me to start my career um, with the Department of Navy uh, with Navier down there back in uh, 2002, um, which has uh, been a long stint for me. So it's definitely been uh, fun and rewarding um, all in all throughout since my career there. It's an incredible journey. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. So thinking about what you studied and how you found your niche within electrical engineering, could you walk us through a bit of your academic background and how it got you to where you are today? Yes, I would say uh, I always had an, uh, a knack for, for mathematics. So I would say back in high school, um, there was this particular, as always, the, the story, right? I was always like the tinkerer stuff, but there was this particular teacher, um, which was a math teacher, um, he kind of saw something in me that I probably didn't see in myself. Uh, he just kind of sees that, hey, um, Israel, this, you know, math kind of comes easy to you. Um, so why don't you kind of challenge yourself and try and apply it to certain technologies. Um, so from there, um, I was able to kind of take some audiovisual stuff um, as well as build uh, certain circuits um, while I was in high school. And once I got out of high school, that kind of led me to saying, hey, I wanted to try electrical engineering. Um, in the collegiate field, undergraduate. Um, from there, uh, I went to Morgan State University, um, which was outstanding and awesome. Um, they graduated 90% uh, of their electrical engineering majors. And um, at the end of that career, excuse me, at the end of uh, that degree field, definitely there was a career that was awarded to you and waiting uh, within that field. Um, after um, I was in, Morgan State, I found the niche that I love, which was called digital communications. I just love the zeros and ones behind that. So a lot of people to understand zeros and ones, right? So uh, zeros is off, ones is on. Um, digital communications is how we communicate within cell phones. So yeah, that's the way we actually operate uh, through cellular, cellular and wireless uh, divisions of communications. So learning that and kind of becoming familiarized in that and kind of specializing in that um, I was able to kind of take that and then kind of go off and uh, go to my professional career that led me to Navier. Wonderful. Yes, ma'am. So you serve as an engineer and a director. So thinking about both of those roles, how do you use STEM in your day-to-day -day job? So awesome. STEM is used every day in everything that, that I do. Um, so basically um, coming up with cool technologies and design. So we do a lot of integrating of what we call the um, communication systems, computer systems, um, intelligent surveillance and reconnaissance systems. So what that all means is, right, so we're taking these uh, radio systems, we're actually 
um, taking Raspberry Pis, little small components, embedded system design stuff, um, resistors, capacitors, we're building these little circuits that are actually um, able to communicate and provide data that flows through to another entity that can be uh, beyond line of sight, um, 20,000 miles away or within different countries and areas and integrating these uh, things, what we call, we'll say, um, payloads, I would say, which is or sensor systems, right? And it's basically just something that's integrated that can actually detect or uh, pick up traffic or some type of data uh, that we actually will utilize to kind of free data back to us that may be at a particular center um, that most people don't see that's occurring. Um, and with, within that, within those technologies, right, the science, technical engineering, mathematics, right, we're basically ensuring that um, the engineers that, that work for me, as well as the engineers that, that I am, the engineer that I am as well, that I'm actually helping to incorporate this type of technologies on these various systems. It could be um, ship systems, right? Um, we call the uh, Aegis, DDGs platforms, aircraft carriers, uh, all sources, uh, as well as uh, what we call unmanned aerial systems, unmanned aerial vehicles. So what you see today, like the young STEM world, right? Uh, they go to uh, Best Buy, right? They go buy them a UAV and just, they just put it up in the air. They call it DJI Phantoms, right? And they're just playing with it. And it's like, right? It's like, oh, it's just cool. It's going up in the air. But just uh, uh, picturing that, right? We actually take stuff like that and we actually put uh, cool technologies within those particular systems, right? To actually perform a particular duty uh, to help us um, gather necessary data to support various missions um, that's either um, helping to secure type of da secure um, data that we need to, to perform a mission to support um, a, a need uh, for, I would say, the young sailor marine that's out there on an aircraft carrier or that person that's within the aircraft um, or a jet fighter and stuff like that. So um, that's how we use STEM on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, we come up with basically um, like uh, innovative ideas, right? That's the thing about STEM. You want to be innovative, right? So how, how do we take existing technology, right? Commercial off-the-shelf type technology that's already existing and how do we make it better? Or how do we, how do we uh, I don't want to say, how do we uh, incorporate certain things within existing technology to help us go quicker, move faster, uh, bring the data that we need so that we can support the, the mission as well as, you know, it could be the pilot, the sailor, the marine, or it could be um, the person that's out in the field um, supporting urgent operational needs, joint urgent operational needs, right, in a combat field in an area to help defend us on a day-to-day -day nation. So that's how we use STEM um, within, you know, where I'm at, the people that work for me, as well as me being an engineer, um, looking at what we call command control uh, communications, computers, intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, and integrating all that type of technology um, to support naval aviation, as well as to help move uh, aviation technology into the next future, that ensuring that we can sleep peacefully day in and day out, you know, from um, a defense perspective throughout. So STEM is awesome. It's uh, something that we have to keep um, training our current workforce, uh, something that we have to always keep incorporating and trying to see how do we uh, better and improve technologies that's out there today so that will help us um, stay ahead of the cutting edge technology that other countries are developing accordingly. Entirely. Yes. And yeah. it's great to see even the skills within electrical engineering that you're working with, mm -hmm. like soldering and the microcontrollers, mm -hmm. are skills that so many high schoolers and college students are acquiring on their own. Yes. So starting off early, it's, it's great to see the applications and the future ways that the Department of Navy will hone in on those skills. Yes, yes, right? definitely. It's, in, it's a, one of the key things that we also do too as well, right, is we help build that, uh, that STEM initiative, right? So that's something um, that that's part of what I do in my office too, right? So we're reaching out to the high schoolers and we're also reaching out to the K through sixes and we're, we're trying to incorporate the certain technologies 
um, that we're currently looking at within that there, right? Into the schools, like you just stated, like with the microcontrollers and embedded systems and basically trying to teach the teachers there, right? So, okay, maybe do a little small project here. And then we actually have engineers that work for us that will actually go and train the teachers as well as uh, provide course curriculums in those STEM fields so that they, they can have the aha moment and learn how to design and code, right, in Raspberry Pi. And then basically, how do you integrate that code to make an arm move, right, or to fly a UAV or to transmit data here and there. So that's, that's STEM is, is, is big. And the fact that what we do on my day-to-day -day basis for me is ensuring that, you know, I'm helping to grow that next generation, right, that K through six, the high schoolers, as well as, you know, the, I would say the undergrads or um, the people that are just getting to college and still trying to figure out exactly what they want to do uh, within their career field. So that's, that's spot on. So in addition to your love of binary numbers, Israel, mm -hmm. is there any specific moment within your job or a memory that you've had of a project that you would say is your favorite? Yes, uh, there's a couple, <laughs> uh, there are definitely a couple. I would say the biggest one, which was uh, awesomeness, was uh, um, what we call the, the newest aircraft carrier that's out there. So uh, being um, a part of that the design development where we actually integrated cool technologies. Uh, and I would say just, uh, just being able to design the new future radar system, right? So a radar system is basically something that's detecting something at a particular, um, at, a, at a particular um, detection, right? And it's also bringing in data back that's showing you exactly, okay, where do my aircraft need to be, et cetera? How do I align my aircraft in particular, in particular airfields and stuff like that accordingly? So being here and able to design that, being behind the scenes, right? That's what the STEM is, right? You're being the, behind the scenes, you're designing, you're using the math, the algorithm, you know, the curriculum, the, the computer systems, you're using your computer engineering skills, the hardware and the software all into one, and you actually are able to, you know, design that stuff, integrate it, and then you actually see this big system that comes about and is actually integrated on the platform, uh, aircraft carrier, and you actually see it operationally working, right, where it's actually managing air traffic control um, within a big naval airspace that's out there, uh, what we call this, this big, floating aircraft carrier, which is like a big floating city that's out there um, that's moving multiple, multiple things um, that's accordingly. I would say that was kind of uh, the greatest, one of the biggest aha moments there, just being able to see something as a, as a design engineer, um, which we all want to see that tangible product at the end, saying I physically was able to help, you know, take the latest and greatest technology design you know, using embedded systems or like digital communications and or looking at Raspberry Pis and designing things and using algorithms and then actually having that data, having the software code, all that stipulated into this one big system and then seeing it operationally um, detect and then retract as well. It's just, it's just an awesome feeling, awesome thing, so. So looking forward in terms of electrical engineering and information technology, how do you see your division expanding or advancing? So definitely uh, we are, on a, I would say today, we're definitely, um, we're looking at the newest, greatest technologies, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning. Um, those are some of the key things that's out there, live virtual conceptual concepts. So all, so everything, right? So we're looking at those binary numbers within uh, artificial intelligence, right? We're looking at machine learning, right? How we're looking at data analytics too, as well, from that perspective. So we're staying on top of that technology. So we're training our current workforce in those particular areas and fields. So, because as you notice, right, um, current, I would say, academia, right, is not saying, okay, you're coming out with an AI degree or you come artificial intelligence degree or a machine learning degree. It's something that's an adjunct that's currently to your particular STEM degree that you currently have. So me as an electrical engineer, right, I have to go back and learn, okay, what's artificial intelligence? What's the technologies behind that? Or machine learning or data analytics? And how do you slice it and dice this data accordingly um, so that you can actually um, apply it to current technologies to advance it to what we call um, a 
test readiness level seven, right? So we can actually integrate onto our current aircraft carriers, or our current um, uh, aircrafts, or our current UAVs, or our UASs, and things of that nature, our current technology across the board. It's amazing. Yes. So within our dynamic conversation today, Israel, do you have anything else that you'd like to leave our listeners with? Now, I would just say uh, the biggest thing I would say to leave the listeners with is uh, just, you know, keep an open mind, be innovative. You know, this is what I tell everyone, you know, just, uh, you know, STEM is, there is no, there is no stipulation on STEM, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's so open out there. If you look at how uh, technology has moved within the last two years, right? Just think of uh, being that type of person that's behind the scenes, helping everything kind of just move at a rapid pace um, and just persevering through it. It's hard but just persevering through it on a day-to-day -day basis and you'll get there. Thank you so much for a yes. great conversation yes. and for all that you do as a program leader in information technology. And clearly I can tell that you're off to great things when it comes to being a mentor to so many students. So thank That's you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And thank you all at home for watching. Be sure to check out past and future episodes of Naval Horizons. Until next time, I'm Samina Mondal.